Uh, Neil, I guess uh, another welterweight prospect on on the up and up standing across from you. So uh, I guess what uh, is this just old hat for you now? Like, oh, who's the next undefeated young prospect you're going to have me fight? I mean, it's just kind of one of those things that uh, is definitely not the plan to find myself in a position over and over and over again. Um, it's definitely the goal is to like keep moving forward, keep advancing, keep doing your, your thing or whatever. But um, just so happens, just the way the sport plays out. I mean, uh, if you're ranked, lose a ranked fight, you fall back in the rankings and you kind of have to uh, get a win to get yourself back into a position to like, all right, now I can call out somebody ranked above me sort of thing to keep climbing, keep moving forward. Um, but yeah, here we are again, finding another undefeated up and comer in the UFC. Um, there's nothing I'm not used to at this point. Um, definitely, uh, I, I don't think I enjoy pressure. I definitely feel like I thrive in that kind of pressure, uh, especially with this fight. It's a lot on the line. I mean, it's a um, uh, main card fight. I'm here in Canada fighting a Canadian guy uh, in his home turf, so to speak. So um, the bar is definitely set pretty high for me to go out there and get it done. So going off of that, I feel like a lot of people would assume the pressure is on Mike, right? He's fighting in his backyard, and he, you know, they want he wants to be the face of Canada. But you say this is also high pressure on your end. So why is why do you feel the pressure fighting Mike in his backyard? Yeah, I mean, of course, at this point, like uh, if you're the guy fighting the uh, if you're an older guy fighting a young up and coming guy, then it's like all right, cool. Someone's kind of replacing your throne, so to speak. Right? I mean, like any other uh, uh, I don't know what I don't know what the right word would be. Any other. Uh, um, Ecosystem you look at it. There's a if there's a young challenger coming to challenge the uh, the vet, so to speak. That vet's position is kind of uh, uh, in question at that point. So um, the pressure definitely for me to go out there and uh, make a statement and show like, nope, not going anywhere anytime soon. And what do you make of my skill set? Because obviously, like we said, like you you fought in Ian Gares, the shop cuts, like all of these guys coming up. And where do you think he ranks in all of these in terms of his skill set? Um, he's definitely up there. He's a very well rounded fighter. I mean, you look at his uh. Even though he only had four fights in the UFC, he's currently undefeated, and he's been able to um, do it all throughout his career. He's a guy that has uh, knockout power. He's a guy that has the ability to uh, also grapple and finish the fights with grappling as well. Uh, so he definitely has a very wide uh, variety of skill sets that he has and uses them well. Last one for me. Obviously, a lot was going into – was made in the lead-up to your last fight, but even the fallout, I feel like a lot of fans kind of gra- like are on your side now. Like <laughs> they came to your defense. So what's the last few months been like in terms of fan reception and response and everything? Um, honestly, it's been great. I mean, uh, throughout the course of my career, and especially over the last couple of months, like uh, um, it's just obviously I'm not a guy that has – Three million followers on Instagram, some careers like that. But I always had a very um, loyal group of supporters that kind of uh, uh, stuck with me through uh, through thick and thin. And these last few months have shown nothing but that. I mean, uh, yeah, August was a very difficult point for competition, but it was also difficult in my personal life as well. Um, it was a very uh, difficult place that I found myself, whatever, but like um, getting those uh, messages of uh, encouragement and support and that kind of thing uh, really meant the world to me. I did appreciate every last one of those guys. And that was quick. <laughs> oh, hi, Neil. Right over here. Uh, to your right, right over here. Oh, cool. Uh, when you're sizing up uh, an upcoming town like Malat, uh, do you factor in at all the quality of his previous opposite preparation? Like the guys that he's fought before, the three guys he fought before you particularly, do you look at their resumes? Does that matter? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, if I, uh, I found out very early on that I could be uh, one of the business mistakes that I made. I mean, or that I could make, sorry. Um, I mean, for example, back in 2015, 2016, uh, I was just kind of visiting my mom in Philadelphia at the time. And I was like, right, I'm going to find a local gym to go train at. Uh, and I just happened to come across the gym that Sean Brady was training at um, back then. I was like, huh, you're not in UFC yet, are you? Like, no, I'm still fighting for this region promotion. I'm like, they should definitely be in the UFC. Like, I have no doubt in mind you'll be there pretty quick. Um, and watch what Sean Brady's been able to do over the last couple of years, being uh, uh, a top-ranked guy now, just uh, made event fight coming up, whatever else maybe. Um, it, it just goes to show how talented people are um, in the sport, even guys that are new to the UFC or not in the UFC yet. There's a lot of very talented people um, who are out there. So for me to, like, look at Mike Malat's um, – uh, resume so to speak thus far in the ufc and think like oh he hasn't fought anyone i fought yet uh it should be a, a kickball for me that would be one of the biggest mistakes i can make i know for a fact there are some guys out there that are uh, just absolute killers when it comes to mixed martial arts and uh i feel like mike is one of those guys he's definitely a cup, tough competitor um and i can't make the mistake and think of like oh yeah i fought uh the best of the best mike should be no problem for me i know for a fact he's a he's a tough upcoming dude looking to bring to the rankings so um i know he's gonna bring out the best fighter in me uh, I hope the city's been treating you well because you are facing sort of the highest, I guess, ranked Canadian on this card. Um, has it been refreshing this fight week, especially compared to all the shenanigans from last time? 
Oh man, this is great. <laughs> this is it's been amazing. I mean, uh, weight slow, been avoiding the cold. Like it's been a great fight week. I mean, uh, like I said, there's been a lot going on in these uh, uh, past few months. But like even uh, uh, with my partner and I, with my partner and I, we're able to actually focus on uh, um, the future between uh, what's best for our family kind of thing. And uh, it's been great. Um, I have zero complaints about going to this fight week compared to uh, the shenanigans I had to do it back in August. <laughs> Yeah, Neil, just real quick, just talking about those shenanigans. You've been doing this for a long time. You've experienced pretty much everything you can in this game. Um, has there ever been something comparable to that kind of leaking over into your personal life, like beyond the fight? Um, you know, because I know like fighting to a degree is personal always, but that kind of went to a different level for you. Have you ever experienced anything even remotely close to that? Yeah, I mean, that definitely was something I never experienced throughout the course of my career. And I, thought I experienced everything you could possibly imagine at this point when it comes to um, certain obstacles you will have in your way. I mean, I uh, had to fight. I literally had to fly out the the week that my first son was born uh, to go to a fight. I literally had to uh, miss my son's birthday for a fight. I mean, I literally had to um, endure the, the loss of my grandmother for a fight, the loss of my brother for a fight. I literally had to go through all these different uh, lists of emotions uh, over the course of my UFC career for the last 12 years now um, and all these different things that came to uh they came up and I just had to like, just find a way to deal with it and find a way to like make it through or whatever. Um, but this past one was like really, really difficult. Not because like what it um, did in the fight itself, but like what those uh, comments meant for me outside of the cage, so to speak. It wasn't just a, a matter of like, all right, you want to fight, you lose the fight. It was actually, no, like the, my ability to actually uh, be the father I want to be, be the parent I want to be is actually a stake now based off of what um, someone perceived I was saying um, or whatever and how they chose to uh, spin it in the media. I mean, that, that was just a very difficult place that I found myself. And I'm very fortunate that we were able to move past that and uh, put it behind us, uh, put it behind us now and be the point we're in now. But um, that was definitely one of the lowest things I've ever seen a point to do uh, ever. Glad that's better now. And uh, just last thing, <laughs> you're kind of among this group now, like, you know, Jim Miller, Andre, obviously, <laughs> like, you know, ones who have just <laughs> high up there on the records for fights, uh, wins, all that stuff. Do you have like a big kind of milestone you want to like cross off the list before you're done with this? You know, for Jim Miller, it was UFC 300 for, so for sure. Long. For Arlovsky, I think it's just fight forever. Um, what's what's your thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it was this, it's all about the competition. I mean, I'm just I'm so competitive right now. I just, I just want to keep competing. Um, like I'm the I'm the kind of guy that if I'm driving down I-25 and way to train, I see my trainer partners on the highway with me. At that point, it's a race. Who's gonna get to the gym first? Like even though he may not be competing to get to the gym quick, I'm like, oh no, he's right there. I gotta beat him to the gym. Like it's just I'm just that much of a competitor or whatever. Um, I think for me, like once I start slowing down as far as like not being competitive to my peers or whatever, that's when I'll start looking like, all right, maybe what's next kind of thing. Um, when I look at my career thus far and where I want to go with it, for me, the best way I can explain it is. Uh, um, an expression that I heard Steve Harvey use where it's like uh, you aim for the moon in case you miss the end amongst the stars, so to speak. And that's why I feel my UFC career is now. Like, yeah, sure, I'm still aiming for that um, gold belt. I'm still aiming for that championship. In five years from now, if I retire and it's, uh, it never happened, I'll be content with all the accolades and uh, accomplishments and records I set along the way. Neil, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but going back to those comments made before your last fight, you know, you mentioned there about the sacrifice you've had to make, including missing your son's birthday and stuff like that. It's such a personal thing to accuse someone of, right? During the time it was happening, did you think to yourself, wow, this guy's trying to get in my head or he's a young kid, he doesn't really understand what he's saying? Like, what were you taking from him when you were saying that stuff? Yeah, I mean, to lack of better words, it's just a very crappy feeling because like, uh, I'm not sure if you guys ever went through this, but like going through a separation or whatever, it's, it's, it's like a, it's a list of emotions that you go through trying to process it all. Like, oh man, what happens next? What about this? What about that? Uh, and you're thinking worst case scenarios and all sorts of stuff. So um, to have something like that be taken out of context and uh, um, have it be thrown in your face when it comes to uh, ex-partners and like uh, attorneys and all the nonsense like it's just a, a very uneasy feeling of uncertainty like you know what I mean like I um, fought through injuries I fought back from losses I had everything that comes to like actually my actual uh, UFC career and, and uh, professional career or whatever but when it comes to like my actual life when it comes to me actually being the uh, the father would be to my kids and that kind of thing when that starts to be um, questioned or put in jeopardy based off of uh, um, how things are being perceived how things are being uh edited or whatever else it may be, um, then it becomes that much more difficult to manage that I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. Like, I know I can bounce back from a loss. How do I bounce back from, like, less time my kids or my kids even take away in general kind of thing? So, um, to me, that was just, like, the worst possible feeling I can possibly have where it's like, what does this mean? Like, what, where's this going to go? Like, it was, just, it was just a lot of uncertainty going with there. But, like I said, I'm fortunate that we were able to put that behind us and uh, be in a better place now.
I'm glad to hear that. Um, he then obviously had his own moment with comments and stuff being taken and, and turned around. I sort of think I know the kind of guy you are. I don't think you got much joy from that, but do you think maybe that's an educational moment for someone that like, hey, you don't take comments and they can be twisted and maybe we don't do that in future? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you just don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like uh, even my training partners and my my teammates, like um, everyone, like I have a very unique approach to like coaching or giving advice to uh, some of my teammates, some people who ask me, hey, what do you think about this? Um, I've done damn near everything you think of when it comes to the sport, that kind of thing. So uh, when, I, when it comes to giving advice and that kind of thing, I try to teach from the mistakes that I made along the way. Um, like any coach can like re review a, uh, a move or technique or whatever else it is and like kind of give you the right way to do it. But having that experience of actually going through and doing it the quote unquote wrong way or um, incorrectly, whatever, and seeing what that, uh, seeing the long-term effects that may have for you, um, there's nothing better than that teach for a moment. And if I can share a teach for a moment with anybody else, whether it's a guy like Ian Gary or a teammate, I'm more willing to do that, uh, that, that kind of thing. So uh, watching Ian Gary go through what he was going through, uh, I was getting so much like, so many people reaching out saying, hey, look, look at this. He's getting his turn now. I'm just like, I don't enjoy this. Like, what, what joy am I going to take from someone going through um, something that person or whatever? I know what that meant to me a couple months ago. So if I were to be the kind of guy to turn around and say, like, oh, ha, ha, look, you go through this now. Like, I'd be the biggest turd out there. So um, I, it was very um, difficult for me to, like, kind of, like, get those messages along that way. It was like, hey, look, what's happening with Ian Gary right now? It's kind of like, hey, you know what? I, I don't care about that nonsense. It has nothing to do with the, with the actual fight game, whatever. I tend not to. I don't want to. Uh, focusing my attention on it or giving it any attention that it doesn't deserve kind of thing. I hope he's able to figure it out, who's able to be there for his kid and uh, move forward past it or whatever. Uh, and I wish he got the best. I mean, at the end of the day, for me, it's competition. And he got the best of me on competition night. And other than that, I have no desire to see him uh, uh, go through any differences whatsoever. But the only thing I look forward to is like potentially getting a rematch with him. But as far as him, uh, uh, like going through any kind of uh, negative stuff with his family, things like that, I can care less about it. I actually wish the guy the best so we can pull through it. And Neil, I know you like being the underdog. I don't know if you're taking a look at the odds, but you're a pretty big underdog in this fight. Does that surprise you just based off who you fought in your career compared to who Mike's fought? Um, I mean, not seen my last fight. It was pretty bad. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things that uh, it just, it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, like uh, those odds can, I, I can care less about him. I mean, uh, I remember having a conversation with my training partners, uh, Austin Hubbard, a while back, where uh, there was some stat that some uh, company had put out where it's like, oh, wow, and he was one, like, nine out of ten fights that he was an underdog in or whatever. And I was, like, kind of like, oh, yeah, I did do that, didn't I? I won every fight I was supposed to win. And without a missing a beat, Austin turns and says, like, yeah, but you lost every fight you were supposed to win, too. And I was just like, damn, dude, that sucks, but you're right. There are fights where I was favored and I lost. There are fights that I was underdog and I won, but like those odds, they don't mean a thing to me. At this point, I know uh, what I've been through over the last couple months as far as like training goes, uh, another amount of preparation I put to this fight, so there's no doubt I'll be successful Saturday night. Speaking of your team, it seemed like a lot of the fighters showed up during the holidays. I know you have a teammate of yours actually fighting on the unified card on, on Friday night. Um, how, what did that mean to you, just that people were you know there for you uh, when maybe they might might have wanted to take some time off during the holidays? Man, it was great. I definitely appreciate those guys. I mean, literally, like, uh, like Christmas fell on a Monday this year, and I was like, all right, Monday is, uh, I get it. It's actual Monday on the calendar, but it's a wrestling day. I need guys to wrestle with. Uh, so being able to get guys to wake up on Christmas morning and say, hey, I'll be there to wrestle with you or whatever uh, and give what you need, I, I definitely appreciate those guys showing up for me. Um, and in return, I'll do the same for them. I mean, uh, there's literally been practices where it's like, all right, well, I'm on daddy dude right now. And it's like, all right, well, I'll rock my son to sleep. I'll be in practice with you, and then we'll, we'll pick up from there kind of thing. Uh, and it's just been – it's just cool to have – uh, a group of people around you that kind of just supports your goals and, and visions and dreams and kind of thing and just kind of push you every day. I know you said you didn't like it when people were kind of rubbing it in about everything that Ian Gary was going in, but a lot of fighters I saw defend you uh, while all this was happening, even before the stuff with Gary came out. What did that mean to you to just see a lot of fighters come to your support and say, hey, Neil's not a bad guy. What, what, what's, what's he talking about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was definitely great to have that kind of support uh, with the media, with my peers and that kind of thing. Just uh, the kind of like... Hey man, you'll be okay, kind of thing. Let's this this is kind of settle uh, here sooner or later. Uh, it was definitely cool to have that kind of support, but uh, at the end of it, like I this training camp, this uh, last few months, I literally had some people like literally just kind of. Uh, show up and just make the best of it. I mean, even this past, my last week of training, I had a uh, a nanny quit on Monday on the way to the gym. She's like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to tell you I quit. Uh, and I was like, huh, I have to go train kind of thing. And the coach was like, hey, bring kids with you. We got it. We'll take care of it. And my coach is literally rocking my son while I'm getting my weight, my uh, my training done um, or whatever. It's like, man, just the, the way that my quote unquote village came together for this uh, training camp and life in general, I, I'm just truly grateful for it.
And just last one for me, any plans to go back to Philly and train with Sean Brady and, and his team uh, anytime soon? Oh, 100%. That, that is a necessity. I mean, it's a, to have that kind of a um, competitor, to have that kind of push, to have that kind of a drive on a daily basis, it's, it's almost needed at this point. Go. Done. Go. Thank you, guys.